Hi guys, this is Matthias coming at you here with a video about my fully upgraded fighters. And yes, this is nuts. I know, my opinions about Battlefield 5, especially the flying, has been rather negative until a few days ago. Because I recently started getting my upgrades for the fighter planes. There are two of them on the German side and there are two of them on the Allied side. And uh, at first they were quite confusing to me. They're in some way quite similar. They look the same and the names are almost the same. Oh baby, a quad! Now for the German side they're called either BF109G2, like this one that I'm flying, or BF109G6, and you see that one soon in this video as well. I'm going to show you the upgrades I've made on the planes that you see in this video, and then we can all discuss in the comment section below whether or not I made the right choices or not. Now for the G2, I think the most deciding upgrade I had was the two wing-mounted rockets. Obviously they're designed to kill a ground targets, infantry especially with its massive splash damage, but also they're good against tanks and they can be used against planes. Now I have had most success with my rockets against planes when I shoot against bombers, especially when they're seat switching and you know they're flying in a straight line. But they are rather forgiving. Now to me, the most thrilling experience of flying in Battlefield 5 is easily with the Spitfire MKVA. And these upgraded guns are obviously for air to air, but uh, yeah. Whoa! Now, I'll be honest, I haven't been able to get a lot of kills on infantry with these guns, and it's not because of the guns, because that's I'm sure you can tell they are really good for it. It's just that it's really, really hard to see infantry in Battlefield 5, and I guess that's a big part in how this game is balanced. Now, this is the very clip where I first noticed, or at least paid attention to, how not only the fire rate is really high, but also the bullet velocity. Obviously you can see that I'm overleading and I have to readjust from the previous planes and the previous guns I've been using. And here I would like to give you a basic advice. Now being that there are uh, four different planes and two different guns for each plane when it comes to, you know, air-to-air -air combat or that you can use for air-to-air -air combat is basically just go for the sound. If it has a high pitch sound and you see that it has high fire rate, it's just shooting really, really fast, then you're using the guns that requires the least amount of leading. So if you have a difficult target, either one that is moving very rapidly or one that is quite far away, then you should not use the one that you see me using here. Now I am required to lead quite a bit, but it's okay because this is a slow moving target at a rather close range. So basically, if the gun you're using has a low pitched sound and has low fire rate, then it's mainly intended for infantry. Now you can clearly see that it's not bad against planes, but its drawback is that it's a little bit harder to hit with. Now for me when it comes to settings and key bindings and some such, I have it basically the same as I have it in Battlefield 1. I didn't change much because to me, for the most part, there's no need for it. A lot of it is basically default, but I'll show you that at the end of the video as well as I'm going to show you my upgrades. I have to say, playing on this map, flying and experiencing the air combat on Fjell uh, 562 I think the name is, it is a very very thrilling experience. I'm having more and more fun doing it, and I think DICE did a fantastic job making these iconic airplanes fit into their game franchise. And I don't care whatsoever if they are realistic or not. As a matter of fact, I'm actually watching a documentary or a movie about the Spitfire. It's called the Spitfire. And however much is actually similar to in real life, I don't know. But a big important factor in why it is so much fun to fly on this particular map is because of the design of it. 
flying next to uh, the mountainside of this fjell, trying to take cover using the terrain or getting one of those repairs off when you hope nobody can shoot you. I don't know what to say, it's just a lot of fun. And unfortunately I have to say that comparing this map to any of the other maps in the game, it just doesn't come close to the same experience. And I mean, it just looks incredible. This is on low graphics, by the way. Someone is mad at the enemy team about you. Okay. Or the other guy saying something in Finnish? Yeah, he is. Now with my other German fighter, the G6, I haven't fully upgraded it yet, but by the time that you're watching this video, I probably have those wing-mounted rockets on this plane as well. However, I have the explosive rounds, and the fact is there are several nose guns that will kill infantry quite easily, as long as you can get over the most difficult obstacle when it comes to air-to-ground, which is to be able to see your enemies. Oh, if that was a Battlefield 1 tree, if that was a Battlefield 1 tree, I would be toast. That would have killed me. Now, if you have a lot of experience from flying in other Battlefield games, then most of your skills are going to transfer over quite quickly to Battlefield 5. One of many things is to know certain things about the map, like, for example, where are the stationary AAs, and uh, where is it likely that your enemy mobile anti-air is going to be. Now on top of that, you also need to know where to resupply your plane, and depending on what target you're going for, you might have to resupply after each attack. When it comes to the wing-mounted rockets that you'll see me use here, you can only carry two of them, and once you fire them, you need to resupply again before you can shoot the next couple. The resupply stations, if you would call it that, are a little bit hard to see actually, but they look like this, and all you need to do is fly right through them or next to them. A triple! So, if you want to see the choices I've made when it comes to specializations for my fighters, then just keep watching for another two minutes and I'll show you. Worth it! Worth it! Okay, screw it. Long shot. Long shot. Oh, I killed a V. I killed a tank. So yeah, let's take a look at the settings first here, and uh, the first thing you want to check out is, of course, you go to Options, you go to Gameplay, and then Advanced, and the way I have it is that I set um, Chase Camera Roll off, 
and uh, yeah that's how you see that the ground is always beneath me no matter how I flip and turn um, some people like it some people don't that's just how I have it um, key bindings for pilot you just take a look I have a space to pitch up that's uh, an important thing and then it's uh, just a matter of taste I put um, exit vehicle on you so I don't jump out uh, by mistake and chase camera I have it on T because that just fits me a little bit better and then I've had a little bit of problems with uh, yeah since, since you have a different uh, a little bit more weapons to choose from I sometimes have a problem uh, switching weapons in uh, critical moments or in, in strafes for example so many times I want to shoot the rockets but I, I press the wrong key and whatever and I haven't really figured out how to deal with that so yeah let me start first here with the BF109 G2 this is uh, I would say this is the main uh, German fighter that I'm using and I went with the right side completely here again this might be something that I will change in the future but for now this is what I have so these uh, two times 7.92 millimeter machine guns for air to air the radar package automatic leading edge increased maneuverability and the wing mounted rockets uh, you have to, you can carry two of them and then you have to re, uh, resupply them once you've fired them if you go for air to air completely you probably want to have this instead of this the reinforced wings because uh, being disabled not uh, not the best but yeah this is what I have for now anyway and uh, we'll see how uh, how this pans out in the future if I'll change it or anything now the next plane is the G6 and this one isn't fully upgraded even though it's close just have a few more points less than 300 points left um, now this this could this is a plane that I could see altering uh, much more it's much more likely that I will alter this plane actually Mm, I don't know about high altitude package, um, but these machine guns looks quite interesting. The fact is, you could probably turn this into a uh, air-to-air -air beast by. Let me see. Yeah, by using this, 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 and this. But I don't really know. I don't know if high altitude package is gonna serve any purpose whatsoever depends on how high you can fly uh, using it and what is gonna what kind of advantages it would actually give you because I mean people will see you up there anyway these guns obviously quite interesting and nitrous when you you know maybe not so good for dogfighting but if you fly on fiel for example you can just use it to get away from uh, planes chasing you as you uh, fly next to the mountainside and dogfighting in the normal sense doesn't really apply but yeah we'll see how that goes anyway this is what I have so far this is the uh, air to ground cannon so to speak I picked that one over this one it was not an easy choice actually <laughs> this is not an easy choice either to be honest but this is for air to ground this is for air to air well m basically um, <clears throat> I have much harder time deciding on this plane now this is for the allied forces let me see this is the VB the Spitfire VB pick this side have machine gun field repair instead of this one speed boost and the rockets I don't I don't honestly I don't really use this plane that much uh, I have a also a hard time with that one this on the other hand these beast machine guns they're fun to use I should utilize smoke a little bit more but I'm not entirely sure about it I might uh, replace it with this one these bombs I haven't had much success with 
but it really helps to have the radar package so uh, yeah the, it, it's it, especially this upgrade this upgrade makes such an enormous difference so yeah so far that's what i have but uh, i'm not entirely sure what's going to happen in the future i might change my mind about a lot of these things so uh, we'll see anyway thank you all for watching and uh, see you in the next video